a chance So say goodbye To everything you ever knew before And I'd understand if you went running at the door And I'll keep you safe And no harm will ever come to you, I swear And I'd kill if they even dare Getting my joint out. That was an awesome sound. Thanks. I'm going to light my joint. How Hi, Boo. Hi. 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 Hello. So you Hola. Been good? Hola. I'm doing well considering I'm not drunk on vodka. Good for you. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know if I like No, I Good like for it. everyone it's around It's great. Us. It's good. It's, it's good. fantastic. Michigan's doing its end of summer thing. Yeah, fall. Time for me to be a whiny brat. It's, it's been a little chilly. It's been an amazing we, summer, though. We just though. wear warmer things. That's all right. Oh, for no. For a few months. We don't like it. Don't act like you weren't grouching about it yesterday, a, for Christ's sake. I sakes. have no control you over the situation. You have a flannel shirt on right now. Yeah, it doesn't look snazzy. Is it a Mr. Ballin shirt? I want a Kinda. Mr. Ballin shirt. I know. <laughs> Welcome to Michigan Murders and Music, where we discuss murders in our gorgeous state. And top it off with little homegrown music, leaving you with a happy ending and on a good note. And thank you for you letting like us those notes, see don't you? into your ears. Yes, I do. I like those happy endings. Thank you for letting us hang off your earlobes. Lobes? Yeah, maybe it's like on there, like something so have, about Mary. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you have new listeners or previous listeners that you would like to give oh, a little shout out I wanna to. I want to give a shout out to our old school crew first. I'm going to start doing that, I think. Nancy H. and Danny, they've been listening to us for a long time and mm. you guys are like OG and we love you. Thanks. Mm. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. We also have new followers and listeners on TikTok and Instagram. Boo, would you like to start? We have Sarah Boyle, mm. Penny Morris, Stacy Willis, Jacqueline OH728, Nikki Gregory, and Wendy Lynn. Doing Drea and oh. Van Horn 1985. Your Highness, I need to give an explicit content warning <gasps> before we get any you further. Better, because. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Her Highness will say naughty words like boogie. Guaranteed. And we don't want little kids listening to this stuff. And if you don't stop playing with your little thing, I'm going to put it in your butt. Ow. Oh. <laughs> or my own butt. Okay. Also, if your kid finds a Frisbee squirrel, I think everybody might know what I'm talking about when I say okay, Frisbee, Frisbee squirrel. Okay, Frisbee squirrel looks like a complete squirrel, but it's been flat on the road for a few days. Yeah. And his little feet are complete, and there's no fur missing just or anything. Flat, He's flat. just flat and so a little this, solid. If this kid connects a fishing line to it in order to make it unexpectedly move in front of unsuspecting <laughs> passersby, that is not on us. <laughs> we, yeah, sure, it's funny. <laughs> that kid's going to be a comedian when he grows yep, up. Pat that kid on the back God and then tell, right. him, tell him it's not okay to do that. But get him Tell him it. to go wash his gross squirrel hands, too. And, and get him some counseling because you know, it, it's not okay. Definitely do not let that child listen to us. And don't let that child hang off of our earlobes. Absolutely. I'm going to swear like a motherfucker. Oh. I'm See? just saying. See? I've been listening to Leslie Jones, and she swears so much. It's great. We would like to keep our podcast commercial-free and Uh independent. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling a little tipsy, check out our website. We have a tipsy jar. You can put a little... Do you remember some of the episodes where I sound just a little tipsy or straight out drunk? Yeah, you can go to our website, hit the tipsy jar. That would be great. You know something else you guys could do? You could send me some PBR coffee because it is so hard to find around here right now. It's called PBR hard coffee. It's the only thing I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. And Uh, I can't. uh, I spent three hours trying to find. He did. And he finally found some. And 
I cannot tell you, we wouldn't be podcasting if you hadn't found some. No, I think there would have been Thanks. a homicide. I'm pretty sure there would have. Cause yeah. Oh, I know what to do I, I was to not avoid okay my own death. <laughs> do us a favor and share us with a friend. <laughs> Follow us on all the, the usual places: Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You know the shit. Yeah, you know what you to can do. email us if you can. That would be great. Mm-hmm. We are okay. I promise I'm going to diversify our music selection. Just not today, soon, but not today, bitches. Not today, Satan. Today we are featuring Joey Warhead, a local musician and actually a local music advocate who is a sound guy. He sets up shows and live mics. and Does wonderful things for the local a general music community. amazing person. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. Throw up Rosie Palm. I mean, Michigan Hand. No, that's Rosie. I mean, why are there calluses in weird... Oh, never mind. Where are we going it's today? Because- <laughs> Uh, we're going to a, a, a very unknown city called Grand Rapids. Oh, Jesus. It's the Beer City it, now. It's, it's right there. It's Beer City. Is it? Founders is there. No. Oh. There's so many breweries down there now. So Yeah, I don't know anything many about that. breweries. This is a wild and crazy story, boys and goyles. Slap that seatbelt on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to grab my papers. Things are going to get weird. And we're about to get real up in here. Roderick Danzler. Roderick grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, living with his mother and his stepfather. His stepfather was heavily into drugs, whichever kind of, we couldn't really determine. I'm going to assume not the good kind. Right. Not aspirin. It's not just weed. Mm Mm-hmm. At the ripe age of 15, Roderick, in 1992, was convicted as a juvenile for burglary. Dude, 15. Do you think he wore a hat? You know, like like a burglar and a mask? We've talked about this before. He was busted at age 15. There, Do you there. feel like that might have been his first time or I, or not? Because we're about to list off some shit. That's just when he got caught. Right. Within three years, by age 18, he had escalated to abusing his mother, Victoria. She kicked Roderick out and filed a personal protection order P-P-O. against him. Her own son at the age of 18 I, in 1995. I can't fathom having to do that. That oh, would she break had to. my ever-loving heart. The same year, three more women would file PPOs against Roderick because of threats to them or their property. That same year, he literally set fire to his mom's house. He was 18. 18. Like literal Bur- fire. Burned his mom's house down. Dudes, what? <sighs> In 1997, Roderick was finally charged with malicious destruction of property and domestic violence. He was so jailed. It only took yeah. a, a few years to well, t- to slap him. It should have taken like hand. no time at all. Give me your patty. Ow! Wrong side. Who puts their patty hand up when it's supposed to get palm up when you're supposed to get slapped? Me. <laughs> In the year of 2000, he was jailed for a whole 33 days, probations and fines to pay. Yeah, that was for the malicious destruction he did. Malicious. In the year of 2000, he keeps up his winning streak with an assault charge from a road rage incident. <gasps> do you guys know how I feel about road rage? Don't do Ragey? it. Someone's going to pull out a fucking gun and shoot your ass. It's not worth it. Just bitch in your car. For that road rage incident, Roderick was sentenced three to ten years, but he was released in 2005, so he actually only served five years. So the sentence was three to ten years, he served five? Yeah. That's about right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Thanks, guys. He did try to improve his life while in jail by getting his GED and going to counseling for his anger issues. I... (laughs) I, I'm i going to just say he probably had nothing else to do and was most likely ordered to go yeah. to the anger 
Sometime after his Thanks. release, it was reported that he was diagnosed with and getting money for bipolar disorder, and he was off his meds. And what I mean by getting money for is he was on, like, what do they call that? Social security or uh, I don't disability. Medi- Medicaid, disability, Medicare, I think. Medicare, Something Medicare. like that. Okay. Yeah, so he wasn't working because of his bipolarness, right? Mm. Shit, man, I should be scott fucking free not working all day Man, every day right and then maybe I'm we could buy a new car fuck yeah his, his mother described Danzler as having a very explosive temper and would act violently without thinking oh that doesn't sound anything like me when i'm drinking vodka nothing N- right in 2010 roderick Danzler was charged with assault and battery being sentenced to prison for a year so We've had fire, we've had assaults, we've had burglary, we've had more Sounds assaults. Sounds like a sociopath to me. Oh, boy. So now we're, maybe a psychopath, I don't know. So now we're going to hop right into 2011. Roderick was still not in the greatest place mentally. He was, he was using snorting the cocaine. Co- yeah, he was using cocaine High and on cocaine. drinking, which we already know like turns him violent. Nine. Yeah, his mom said he's violent, and then when he drinks, he gets more violent. He loses his shit, and apparently he's bipolar. So, don't. That's a whole. Oh big my mess. god, you're just asking for it. Is he bipolar, or is he just coming down from a coke ride? Right. That's what I want to know. In July of 2011, Roderick found himself in a divorce situation with his wife Jennifer. This surprise! Surprise! How, how did he get? I don't know if the they were place. married or engaged or something oh like that. But okay. Jennifer was in the process of moving out and separating from him, Good and girl. I believe she had been out of his house for a week or so. Not sure if their trip to Michigan's adventure with their daughter was an attempt to win her back or simply time with his family. Possibly it was already a planned thing before Jennifer left him. Do you guys know what Michigan Adventure is? You know, I chuckled when I read through this because Michigan Michigan Adventure... Michigan Adventure is the fucking greatest. It's great. It's a cute little mini, mini roller coaster park. Adventure park. There's With water slides? There's a whole water park area. And then there's the whole, like, you know, you get the little kitty rides. And you have a kitty roller coaster, which I was scared shitless on. It used to be called Deer Park. It's over in Muskegon. It's, it's really close it's to It's like here. perfect because it's smaller than Cedar Point, like way smaller. It's so cool. Look up Michigan Adventures. It, it's, it really it's is pretty cool. pretty fucking neat. So yeah, he took his daughter and his soon-to-be ex-wife to Michigan Adventures. Maybe they were still just being... Trying to figure things out? Yeah. It's a weird situation when during that first then separation time july 11th 2011 came and changed the lives of many people permanently i am amazed at how many people know of this story so not Mm -hmm. just the family members but just everybody the first 911 call came in around 2 30 in the afternoon that thursday a thursday yeah right in the middle of the week It was Roderick's mom calling. She claimed that Roderick had just called her and confessed to having just shot his wife, beautiful Jennifer. Ugh. GRPD went to the home on James Avenue Northeast to see what had happened. Well, 911 calls started coming in just as fast as Roderick's 9mm Glock would spew bullets. At 3.14 p.m. So we're just right in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. 911 call came in requesting the wife and his daughters to be checked. Yeah, kind of like a well visit check. The police arrived at Jane's Avenue, Northeast home, where Jennifer and their young 12-year-old daughter lived. When they arrived, they discovered, sadly, that they were too late. The home was now a crime scene and a horrible one. (sighs) Inside the home were bodies of Jennifer, who's just 29 years old, And their 12-year-old daughter, Jennifer's parents, who were only 51 and 52 years old, Thomas and Rebecca. So he he killed all of them. He, yes, he had basically executed the entire household. Uh, okay. 
There were 12 empty magazine. Oh, uh, nine millimeter f- Glock. Yeah. Empty magazine from a nine millimeter Glock in the scene. 3.15 p.m. Another 911 call comes in from Patricia Emkins. Patricia was reporting that her daughter, Amanda, 27 years old, Kimberly, 23, and Amanda's little girl, who was only 10, her name was Marissa, all of them had been shot by Roderick in their northeast home just a few blocks from the first family massacre. This guy's relentless. We have to assume that within minutes, Roderick wiped out two families who lived blocks from each other. Literally just wiped out his former girlfriend and her family and then ugh, his own child. At that point, he was driving a Lincoln town car. So and police have two crime scenes that they're trying to secure and the known suspect on the run in a tan Lincoln town car. Around 3 p.m., we find out that Roderick had a road rage incident. It seems like this occurred just before the murders or during. It's it's hard to tell. It's hard. Yeah, there's different time situations going on. And you guys know I don't research that much. <laughs> what I do know is that the victim was shot by Roderick. Oh. And... He was shot in the face, and he lived. This is a pretty amazing thing. The victim, Robert, had a titanium plate in his nose, and it deflected the bullet. That is fucking crazy. Well, the poor guy, because, you know, he had some previous incident. Had to have had some sort of accident. Yeah. It had to have been traumatic. And then this happens again. Like, oh, my gosh, that dude. (laughs) That was reported to happen near Godfrey Street and Oxford Street. Two scenes with god-awful situations happening. They have a road rage incident. This guy's on the run. They've literally closed the streets down by the houses and on the northeast side. They start looking for Roderick as there was no question that he was the perpetrator. Yeah, they knew. I I like that term. The the perp? The perpetrator. Yes. He's the perpetrator. Cops are literally everywhere looking for Roderick at this point in his Lincoln. They're all over the northeast side of Grand Rapids. What they did not know at this point was that he had called his buddy Willie. Willie! And asked all calmly for a ride because his car, blah, blah, blah. Willie! He had to ditch his car. Willie! Yeah. Yo, Willie, can you give me a ride? His oh buddy. Oh my God, how do you just call a friend all casually? Hey, After bro. you've just killed, yeah, I just killed five people, and yeah, I had to ditch my car. Ah. So people just never cease oh, to I, just. Oh my god, I, I don't even know the right word. Yeah, at this point, Willie says, "Yeah, sure," and and picked him up, having no idea that his friend had just massacred two entire families. Not only just random families. His families. In fact, he had murdered damn near his entire family. And then they just go chill. They start drinking. They start doing some lines of coke. Because, you know. Because white lines. Yeah, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. White lines. They blow away. Blow away. I know they were driving around a lot. (gasps) And I'm not sure if they hung at anyone's home. Or if they were chopping coke on the road. Just killing time. People do coke while driving and on the road all the time. You want to do it, you'll find a way to do it. I don't know if they like went and hung out at Willie's apartment and chilled for a bit, or if they were just like fucking driving around. But guess what they were driving? What? Uh, I forgot. Then why did you bring it up? I don't know. At this point, GRPD is... All up in an uproar. They've got helicopters out. There's GRPD cars everywhere. Probably the state boys were out. Freaking mass murder just went on, of course. Literally. They're going to be out in full force looking for this. They were, too. I've seen videos. And people who lived near the homes in the northeast side, they were told to stay in their homes. That would scare the ever-loving shit out of me. I'd be like. I'd, I'd lock everything. I'm in the basement. Yep. And I'm going to hide in the dryer. In, yep. In a, Bye. <laughs> in the secret room. Bye. In the basement, mm. which is underneath the concrete floor in what? the basement. I yeah. didn't know about that. We have a secret room. Yeah. Oh, God, there's 
so much to discover in the basement yet. I haven't been down there. It's a pit. Well, Willie, he's hanging with Roderick, right? They're they're drinking. They're coking it up, doing some lines, getting all hyped up. God, that kind of sounds good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm Can still I have some about, lines right now? I'm still laughing about the pit in the basement. <laughs> it just went right over your head. <laughs> I did not hear it, but I will when I... Uh, when I edit this thing, and Willie gets a phone call from his friends and are like, dude, did you see the TV? Like, our buddy, Roderick, is fucking wanted. And Willie's like, um... Yeah, you gotta turn yourself yeah, in, Yeah, I'm kind of hanging out with Roderick right now. Mm-hmm. What the actual fuck? Yeah, he says, Roderick, what's up? They just said you're wanted for murder. Why Why are we hanging here drinking and doing coke like you didn't just kill a bunch of people? So Willie tries to get Roderick. him to turn himself in, but he doesn't. No, he doesn't because him and Willie are riding around in a white suburban. Kind of like OJ's white Bronco. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was getting to. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. So the two are driving around in Willie's white suburban. <laughs> <laughs> Willie's white Willie. Probably thumping some bass. And it's mm-hmm. 7 p.m. at this point. So it's only like four hours after Roderick has, you know, just gunned down everybody. Roderick sees somebody he knows. It's oh, a small chick. town. Yep. Yeah. He tells Willie to speed up and catch up with her. She has seen the news and she knows that Roderick has lost his goddamn mind. So she's like, fuck no if you're going to pull me over, Roderick. So she starts driving straight to the police department. Smartest fucking move ever. I'd blow every red light. Dude, she was genius. That was a genius move. The two argue a bit, and Willie is pushed and or jumped, not sure, out of the Suburban. Yeah, there's a video of that. It was kind of a little of both. I think they were kind of, he was like, dude, let me out of this goddamn car. There's video of it. He gets out of the car and just instantly hands up. I have nothing to do with any of this. I just did some coke with the guy, man. Get that fucker away from me. No idea. Roderick pushes or gets Willie out and then takes off again. Like he's almost to a full stop and cops are right there. Oh, he's of course. But he still manages to get the fuck away from the cops. Mm. I don't know how. Apparently, the cops are the problem, not me. No offense to the police department. I was just a little bit shocked. Shoot a fucking tire out right then. Right then. I, You know, I don't... I don't ugh. Ugh. There are so many things. The cops have to be so careful nowadays. You're right. So, Willie puts his hands up in the air and starts walking towards the cops. Well... Roderick gets behind the wheel and manages to fire five shots at the friend that he saw grazing her arm. So the girl that was taken off towards the police, he still shot at her. Fortunately, she wasn't killed. And that was at Division and Fulton Street. So they they were a little bit away from the department. I mean, a a few blocks. So now it's truly on with the GRPD. There's a full-fledged car chase going on in downtown Grand Rapids. Roderick's just waving and pointing his gun at police and driving like a madman. Yeah, they're, they're chasing around a, a coked-up homicidal maniac. It's, it's the scariest thing on a Thursday afternoon. This right. is scary as shit. Mm-hmm. You'd think it would. Oh my god! On a I don't know. A Saturday, mm-hmm. one a.m. in the morning. A party night. <sighs> mm-hmm. That I don't know why it freaks me out when shit like this happens during the week. It's not supposed to happen, and then it's not supposed to happen during the week. Right. God. Schedule this stuff uh-huh. so we can put it on our calendars and know Thank not to you. go down there. Exactly. Roderick finally takes a shot at one of the Grand Rapids Police Department, giving them a little bit more reign of what they can do. The cop was just about to T-bone the Suburban, and the bullet went through the passenger window or the side window, and it didn't injure the officer. It was amazeballs. That's lucky. He's just firing that thing off like Yosemite Sam. (laughs) 
pew, 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 pew. pew. <laughs> not hitting anybody. The chase goes three miles. Through. I'm still kind of amazed that the cop didn't get it. Just like went oh, through the lucky. window, dude. Uh, that is insane. What a horrible job. Three miles through downtown streets, mm -hmm. this chase went on. Bullets had penetrated the suburban. Penetrated the suburban. Oh, easy with the language. Hitting Roderick in the ankle. So Why he actually got shot in the ankle during oh, this. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, he didn't feel it. But don't worry about him. He was all coked up. So he was like, oh, he's on oh, the run. Hey, my ankle just got shot. I'm mm -hmm. all coked up and adrenaline up. It's all good. Roderick is still on the run from the cops and he gets onto I-196 right near the 131 exchange. Goes into onto the E-way and then immediately drives through the median to drive the wrong way on 196. Thursday afternoon drivers You're headed right chilling in, on 96 and commuters. 131 and he just barrels down the wrong way. Ow, what am I sitting on? What is this? <laughs> I thought you were saying ow because your partner. <laughs> no. This... Like your little sister did. Oh my God, that was hilarious. He's driving. There's video of this to you guys. He's checking over and through medians on expressways, going the wrong way on the e-ways, and um, some kick-ass officer laid down spike strips. They were able to get his car to come to a stop into, was, into a ditch. Yeah, that's about seven fifteen. But, yeah, so four, five hours, three, four, five, six, seven, four and a half hours into it. Four and a half hours of chasing yeah, this but, motherfucker but around this got, town. Gets out of his car and starts running on foot. And they oh, he's going to get away. And they still don't catch him. <laughs> why? He's That's shot crazy. at a cop by now, so they've got... right. Oh. Why don't they just bust him in the foot again or something? So this moron why? Run, runs what? into a home on that kind of shit Rickman drives me Avenue back. Northeast. Crazy. Ending full circle right back near the neighborhood that he started this whole shit show and if they would have shot him in the ditch back there in the what in the ditch <laughs> none of this would happen because it's already a bad day it's a bad thursday around grand rapids but then it gets fucking worse dudes yeah, he, he goes in, into this home on rickman avenue where he held joyce brunel and steve three complete strangers to him he just runs into the house and he's like, hi, I'm coked up as fuck. Yeah. I just killed two families, just had a four hour chase with uh, nine million cops. I'm going to hold you guys hostage. Yeah, for two more hours <sighs> until 930 after apparently hard work from the hostage negotiator. One of the people were finally let go in exchange for cigarettes and a Gatorade. Ugh. Okay. Fuck. Oh, thirsty and I need to smoke. This is why I should start drinking again. <laughs> the hostage was set free and <sighs> and talk continued between the cops and Roderick. Where Have we not learned anything? He talked of ending his life several times. Did they okay. let him Okay. Well, the hostage, let's just say the hostage negotiator wasn't very good at his job. <laughs> no offense, but... I have so many issues with the story. So, yeah. so many issues with the story. <sighs> well, the nightmare finally ended at 11.30 that Thursday evening when Roderick finally, fatally shot himself in the head while holding the two people with him in the closet. You know what, how disturbing that would be to anybody? Just to I be in the same house would be disturbing. One of the people said they closed their eyes and looked away, but still, you've got the sound. I don't want to And then you have a dead body laying next to you. He did leave a suicide note that we were going to read about, but uh, it's too personal. I just can't. Dude had a, a really sad life. I think everybody failed this guy. He, such a good-looking gentleman, too. Yeah, but I, but I think just he, sad. I can't. He brought all this on himself because he's a fucking nut. I don't know. It's just such a fucked up weird story. 
He wrote the note to his mom, by the way. Okay. And if you guys want to look into it, it's online. It's everywhere. But I, I just don't want to read it. I'm a mom. I can't even fathom. This sad spree ended the beautiful lives of the following people. 27-year-old Amanda Emkins. 10-year-old Marissa Emkins. 23-year-old Kimberly Emkins. 29-year-old Jennifer Heron. 51-year-old Thomas Heron. Rebecca Heron, 52 years old. And 12-year-old daughter Camry. In the end, the cops had an ass load of work to do. Is that a metric measurement? It really is. Families were literally destroyed, and the loss and the violence was um, ju- just uh, unheard of for this town. It hasn't happened like that in a while. It was discovered that the gun was illegally purchased, and the three men that were involved in that transaction were charged. I'm glad that the gun people got charged. That never happens or rarely happens. I can't imagine the horror. The horror that the cops went through. The horror that all the drivers went through. The families, these families lost so much that day. You know, we hear sirens and helicopters all the time. It's like, what's going on? It's crazy. There is a happy ending to the story. What's that? Roderick's remaining daughter. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much she had to overcome. But she has opened a store and it's called The Box. And she specializes in fashion clothing and cool shoes. Very nice. If you guys get a chance, go to The Box, support her. Don't say anything about the murders for fuck's sakes. Don't but even like, yeah. tell her about the story. Just go support her. Your Highness. Wait a minute. Huge thank you to Murderpedia today and Wikipedia, along with a gazillion YouTube news clips and videos that I watched. I know for a fact that the chase is on TikTok. It's made modern car chases because the cops t bone them and, and it was like a... Like a real thing. Hollywood stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How do you run from the cops and still get away? Okay, I'm I'm done. I'm going to tell you a story offline. So, we are featuring a really cool individual today Joey Warhead. Joey Warhead. You know what? We're doing this. We're doing it. This song is called Heartbreaker by Joey Warhead. Thank you for listening. Mm. We love you a long time. Long time.
Thank you for choosing Michigan Murders and Music. Please rate the show wherever you listen. Michigan Murders and Music is produced by The Boots. Episodes are researched and written by Your Highness. Edited by Your Highness. Views and opinions are the sole stupidity of us and us alone. Don't blame others, please. Listening to this podcast could quite possibly cause major problems to your earballs and definitely will mess up your kids. Permission has been given to us by the bands and we purchase our music on Bandcamp.com. Support your local music scene and all local music scenes.